the 18th of November, 1991, three fishermen left their village on Nikunau, one of the islands of the Kiribati group. It began as an ordinary fishing trip. Seven months later, on the 11th of May, 1992, they finally made landfall in Western Samoa. They had run out of petrol and strong winds had swept them out to sea. The ordeal that followed in an open boat, exposed to the elements, is one of the great modern epics of survival. When we drifted away from the land, we prayed. After that, we prayed four times every day, starting from early in the morning until the night time. Amen. We caught fish, quite a few, mostly tuna with our lines. We ate them raw. It was the hottest time of the year. On clear days, the worst thing was the sun. No shelter. The sun never stopped. I think it was up two months. We saw something floating in the water. It was a plastic hard hat with Chinese writing on it. That hat most probably saved our lives in the end. We knew we must exercise, otherwise our muscles would waste away. We took it in turns to keep watch. After three months of drifting, the sea was very rough. We were hit by a very large wave and the boat capsized. We didn't see the wave coming. We managed to turn the boat over, but we lost everything except for the plastic hat, a piece of rope and a stick. The boat was very small, so cramped, not made for long voyages. After we lost everything in the campsites, we used the rope to lasso sharks. That was our only food. We always ate the liver first, then we drank the blood of the shark.
the fishermen had faith they would survive. In the village of Tamba Matang on Nikunau, their families never stopped believing that they would return. Well, after the bias disappearance, I felt God is my hope and I trusted in God. There is a custom we call Tawanmi, to hold safe something. It is a symbolic link with the absent person. When Tapaya put his watch on my wrist, I was thinking it is a symbol of his life and he would be the one to take it back from me because he had come back alive. Our friend got sick. He was starving. His feet swelled up. Then his legs. Finally, his whole body was swollen. One morning, he was very weak. He died in the afternoon. We kept him with us for one night. Then we put his body over the side in the afternoon. While we were drifting in the ocean, there were times when we felt really sad and hopeless, but we had a strong desire to live. Fortunately, we had the determination to endure all the difficulties of those seven months. last two months, there were no sharks to catch, so we had to live by drinking rainwater. No food. One day, as it was getting dark, we saw land on the horizon. We were very weak by then, but we started paddling straight away with the hat and the stick. It took us 36 hours to reach the reef. Then we got stuck in the reef. A big wave washed us into the lagoon. We knew we were safe. Then we remembered to pray. At last, we reached the beach. I could only walk with difficulty. Renta could only fall. The epic journey of the Kiribati fishermen was soon picked up by the world press. Their courage and endurance created a new record of survival at sea. These quiet fishermen are modern heroes. For seven months, they suffered heat, exposure and privation on a journey of over 2,500 kilometers. Only their skills and their long familiarity with the sea enabled them to endure this remarkable odyssey until their homecoming.
The two Kiribati fishermen and their families who waited are true traditional sea people of the Pacific. The fishermen had the instinct to become a living part of the sea, to accept without resisting the flow, the drift and the currents of the ocean that would finally bring them home from this longest such journey on record. 